Thursdays in the garden. It is a beautiful sunny day for once. So got my shades on, um, surrounded by the beauty of all the annuals that came in last week. So I'm very excited to share with you some of our, uh, my personal lesser known, maybe favorite annuals that I always use um, for containers or in garden beds. So if you're joining us, um, please let us know. Give us a little shout out and um, if you are watching later or if you are watching um, now and you'd like to submit any questions throughout while I'm going on and on about these annuals, please don't hesitate to throw out questions about whatever you're feeling uh, into this week. So <clears throat> before I get into talking about some of these awesome plants behind me, um, I am very saddened to have to give you this warning that this weekend it's going to get very chilly. So because this is a spring where we are, we are being tested and challenged from all directions, why not throw in a record setting freeze on Mother's Day, right? So if you have already purchased annuals or if you're putting your containers together, please remember to pull them into your garage or up against your house or inside. Find safe homes for those little babies until we can get through the cold weather on Mother's Day. And we can get through it. All right. So I will continue on into some of my favorite lesser known annuals. So as you're shopping, um, I think one reason that some of these are less, I'll call them lesser known, maybe lesser chosen when you're at the garden center is that they don't necessarily make a really cute little plant at the garden center. So remember, you're, you're talking about a plant that's only growing in about four inches, four and a half inches. And sometimes they look a little bit gangly and awkward when they're just sitting there at the garden center, which means either the garden center doesn't want to buy them because, you know, they're worried you're not going to know what to do with them or you're just gliding on past them looking at that instant color of you know impatience and petunias and things so i just want to make sure that you know what you're missing so that you don't miss it out this year so i'm going to start with some plants for sun that i just adore speaking of sun heather miller says hey kathy i'm glad you finally got some sun for one of these i am also glad and <laughs> thanks for tuning in so our first sun loving annual that i'm going to talk about this is called hot lips salvia and it is an upright salvia it's definitely a little taller than um, you know your typical salvia and it's, it's hard to see because it's just starting now it comes out red but then the inner the little throat of these tubular blossoms is white so you have it pops open and has these bright red lips with a white throat and it forms this big bush it's sort of more like a, um, a Mexican salvia so it, it has a, a bigger bushier um, look to it it's very airy and wispy it's great in containers awesome in 4th of July themed, uh, Independence Day themed containers. I use it a lot for that. Um, but also has this really nice airy sprightly quality if you put it in the garden. So a cousin, another awesome salvia because I love salvias, but I love big salvias. So not like your little, um, the little guys, but this is another one that I love. This is black and blue. You might see um, Amistad is another one, black and bloom. They're all kind of related to this, it's got this really pretty um, black stem, a black uh, stem and the calices are black and this really nice indigo blue blossom. So again, sort of um, a little bit deceptive in its pot right now because it is tight and the grower probably treated it with a little bit of a plant growth regulator to keep it tight for shipping. But this bad boy will top out at like 30 inches tall. Awesome central focal point for a garden bed or for a planter. Okay, moving on from salvias, because I could go on and on about salvias. Another fun spiky plant that you maybe haven't tried yet. This is called Angelonia. And again, got a little bit of like a funny shape going on right now because color sells. So the grower wants to make sure you know what the bloom looks like. But the plant is really short and stocky. It wouldn't normally bloom like this. Usually you'd have 15 to 18 inch stems on this, but these really pretty, um, almost snapdragonish looking um, flowers comes in purples, pinks, um, blues, beautiful spiky plant, Angelonia. So try that for sun if you've never tried that one. Okay, I'm super excited about this. You can probably see like masses of it on the benches behind me. This is Las Vegas um, Gomfrina. So Gomfrina is um, sort of an old fashioned farm type plant. It's very easy to grow from seed. 
but it's hard to find anything other than the real tiny dwarf gomfrinas at the garden center. I, if you haven't noticed, am a fan of the big mama plants. So this is one that's going to grow a little bit bigger, more full. Um, another variety of gomfrina that you should try if you ever see it snatched up is gomfrina fireworks. Big, bold, sort of like little truckula trees in the garden and um, nice height to it. So this is going to get anywhere from about 15 to 24 inches tall and nice and full. And the texture can't be beat all those little purple buttons in the garden. So I'm excited to use this one this year. Um, one more sort of moundy filling plant is, this is a celosia, but it is not um, like your typical um, coxcomb celosia. It's the um, Argentia type, so it's actually an edible celosia. It's more closely related to amaranth, and it has more of a, a spiky shaped blossom to it in really cool shades of like fuchsia. Um, you can get a salmon color pinks to it. So um, sort of thinking outside the box of your traditional celosia as your red and yellow, sort of those very primary colors. This is a really fun um, purple fuchsia. It looks like it's from Dr. Seuss. I know. like this even if you're afraid to like go big and bold with all these new things a couple unexpected elements like I live for that I love when someone's like oh what is that one plant in that container because you know that's that's we all want that it's like a little bragging power it's like oh we got this special new thing can't be told about it I noticed last year you were planting peppers in some of these yeah, pots as well peppers are another great one to use if you can find them some of the growers have them in the spring in small pots um, you don't think about necessarily edibles. We talked a little bit about it last week with the lemongrass I was using in one of my pots, but edibles can be a really fun um, surprise element in a container and edible peppers have a lot of different colors to them. Okay, I'm going to talk about two trailing plants. And trailing plants in particular, I think, sometimes look a little ragged on the bench. So, like, if you, I, you would never choose this, right? If you didn't know what this was, it's a little bit raggedy looking. Um, but this one, I'll talk about this one first. This is a Secresia fan flower. So you can see a little bit of what the flower is going to do. It's a trailing plant, so it'll have long cascading arms that then dip back up and show off this little fanning effect of the flowers. It's really unlike anything else texturally, um, and it's, it really thrives on heat and sun. Um, solid performer. I use these a lot in baskets over in our tennis complex, if you've ever seen those. But I love that it dips and then bloop, like there's a little flip of the skirt thing going. So try that, it's really fun. Don't be afraid. Um, again, this is a Secretia uh, fan flower. Kind of Charlie Brown looking, but it will not disappoint you. Can you remind us what the textures are that we're looking for? Oh yeah, so if you're looking, um, generally speaking, but uh, for containers in particular, it would be spiky, frilly, roundy, moundy, trailing. That's my personal motto. So spiky, anything like your salvias or actual spiky grassy plants. Um, frilly being anything with a very fine texture like your gonfrina. Um, moundy being things that fill in spaces like your celosia. And um, roundy being anything with a giant leaf. And trailing is self-explanatory. Speaking of trailing, here's my next trailing plant is for sun. This is called Evolvulus. It has um, a really beautiful blue flower. Now, if, if you you know, you probably have noticed there aren't a lot of true blue flowers in the garden. So this is a real treat. It, it pairs very well with any of like your orange or peachy tones, kind of getting that like blue and peach thing going, but um, a great ground cover. I've used this as a ground cover before, but it, it's a true downward cascade and it has a sort of a silvery green foliage to it. So you could use this in place of where you've been using petunias or calabrocoa, just something to mix it up, evolvulus. And it's just a great color you can't get on any other on any other plant. All right, so my last two for sun, because I just love them, is lantana. So lantana is actually a tropical plant um, and it can be found growing in the wild south of here um, in more tropical um, areas. But specifically, so you may be familiar with lantana. I don't ever want to assume, you know, you might know all these and you're like, Bleh, I've planted all these before. You're not teaching me anything. But, um, if you haven't tried outside of the box, um, this is sort of like your typical lantana, green leaves, it's got a, a kaleidoscope of colors, usually like a yellow, orange, pink, or yellow, orange, red. But 
look at this one. This is really fun. This is Lantana Samantha. It's got this amazing lemon lime variegation with the yellow flowers. So um, sometimes Lantana will take a little break in the middle of the summer and stop blooming. But here you've got foliage and the flowers. So it, this one never disappoints. Just absolutely fabulous um, annual that I order every year. Great in containers and in bedding. But maybe you don't have a lot of sun. Um, so I want to talk about a couple fun things for shade. So we don't want to get into a rut. We don't want to just plant impatiens and caladiums every year. Um, so talk, let's talk a minute about begonias. Hopefully you're planting begonias if you have shade. Begonias are awesome because they pretty well bridge the gap between sun and shade. So if you're not sure where you sit, there's a begonia for that. Um, I will steer you again towards the big mama begonias. So here we've got, um, this is called, literally called big begonia. It's a series um, where it's got the typical sort of mouse eared foliage, but it grows bigger than your normal wax begonia. So you're gonna get 15, 18 inches of height out of this. They really knit together so you can fill in a big space with these. I like to fill in between um, my hostas and ferns and things at our pool complex. I love to knit them together. Um, with a couple flats of these big begonias. Another begonia we talked about a little bit last week is bonfire begonia. So look at that bright orange. It's really hard to find that kind of color, especially in a begonia. It almost has these, it has these long petals, almost like a butterfly hanging out on the ends of it. And it will have this big up and over cascade to it. So you can buy it as a plant. You can buy it as a hanging basket. I always get a lot of comments on it and you can too, if you try a new type of begonia like bonfire. Not that you've never heard of coleus, I'm sure you have, but I just wanted to highlight two that I'm really excited about this year because um, there's room for coleus in every pot and every garden. There's just so many varieties of colors, but I am in love with campfire orange. It's got to be one of my favorites. It's got this really nice orangey, um, creamy, but then it's also got this underlay. All the venation is sort of a fuchsia pink. The underside of the leaves is kind of a fuchsia pink. So it sort of like gives you these warm, gooey, like sunsetty feelings. It just, it just is really warm and um, complements a lot of different colors in your basket. And then this one I'm trying this year um, in a couple garden beds. It's just, sometimes you just pick it like wine, right? Sometimes we just pick it because we like the label. Um, this is called Coleosaurus and I just thought that was really cute. It's got a really nice venation to it. It's got huge leaves. It's gonna be like a big monster in the garden. So I'm excited about Coleosaurus. be outdone for trailing there you go, guy. for trailing in the shade it can be really hard to find anything that blooms so we come back to Terenia I put Terenia in most of my shade pots because it is a reliable bloomer there are two types of Terenia there's um, like the clown series and others that are just little mounds and then my favorites which are the summer series summer wave series um, I think Kauai is also one that trails but you're looking for the long stretchy um, sort of gangly looking ones at the garden center. Those are the ones that are gonna trail. They're gonna cascade right over the edge of your pot. And they're just full of either this nice periwinkle purple, also comes in a yellow with a nice, like a deep amethyst throat. Um, and there's also a pink one. So if you have, if you're looking for a little bit of trailing color for a shade pot, these are the ones for you. So as you can see, I have a lot of favorite animals. There is no shortage of varieties here. Um, maybe you have favorite annuals. Maybe I missed one that you're like, why aren't you talking about this? It's my favorite one. So if you have a favorite you want to share, please put it in the comments. Um, otherwise, we are again looking at a very cold weekend. So I'm um, going to be putting all of these annuals away here and there. We're going to put some in the greenhouse. We have some frost blankets we're going to use. I'm going to load up um, one of our box trucks and just get everything in out of the cold to survive this weekend. But then I think after that, we should be pretty well in the clear, as I've said before, but you know, with mother nature, you never know. So we do have a virtual event coming up for our members. Is that sold out yet? So what we're doing for our members this year is in lieu of our normal gardening class, our gardening workshops, I have designed kits that you can order through the club, um, through our website or through the newsletter. Um, you'll, it is, there are a couple of different kits. So there is a trio for sun and a trio for shade, which means 
we've done in the past workshops um, three tiered planters, so a large, a medium, and a small, uh, 15 inches, 12 inches, 9 inches. The trio kits are just perfect if you have those pots at home and you want to replant them, or if you've always loved that look of like a little trio vignette. Um, and you have pots at home that you want to fill, the Trio kit is perfect. It has everything you need, the design instructions, and there's even going to be a cute little video if you need help doing the actual planting like we normally would in the workshop. We're also offering kits that are called single, single planter kits for sun or for shade. Those are designed to go into a 16 inch pot. So if you've taken the fall container gardening class, or if you just happen to have a, a, some pots at home, either a match set or single, um, that are in that sort of 15 to 18 inch pot size, then this kit is the perfect um, one-stop shop. It comes again with the design instructions, how to put it together, it has a video, and each kit will fill one 16 inch pot. So if you feel inspired by some of these really fun annuals, a lot of those are gonna be in these planter kits. It takes the worry away from having to figure out when you can get into the garden centers, although a lot of them are open now. Um, so send us in um, your orders for uh, through Tuesday. And this is filling up fast, so we need to make sure people register if they want to be a part of it, right? Absolutely, yeah, we want to get those annuals for you as soon as possible. So if you want more information, as always, shoot me an email or put something in the comments section and I will reach out to you. I do thank you again for joining us, for tuning in for Thursdays in the Garden, which is finally in the garden. And I hope that you're able to spend some time in the garden too. Take care.